Hi, Julia Watts here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, so today we're going to do a bit of festive stamping with some woodware stamps. Um, we're going to be using um, some of the new Francoise Reed uh, stamps which were just released um, early August. Um, so on my desk we've got um, the wooden snowman that we're going to be using and also the Christmas borders. They're from the new collection. I am going to use the um, abstract grid uh, stencil because I love it and I've got stock of it and the fairy hogs uh, fairy snowflakes stencil um, I've got I think I've got some of that left and also the snowscape paper pad from Francoise as well which is absolutely beautiful and you can see the colours on the front um, they are double sided so you've got front back front back etc etc six different um, colourways um, uh, 12 is 12 designs six designs no, there's actually 12 designs because there's the front and then there's the back it says six designs but you know what I mean anyway um, yeah four sheets of each has 24 sheets in total and they are really really lovely some have got words on Obviously, a lot of them have got snowflakes on. Obviously, you've got words. Make sure that everything's pointed in the right direction. Um, I've used quite a few of these now. Um, I really, really love them. Uh, and that's in stock. And you'll find them over on my website, juliawattcrafts.co.uk. Now, I have got my fan on. I'm hoping it's not going to interfere too much. I've tried turning it off, but it's just too hot. So apologies for that little whirring going on in the background. You probably didn't notice it, but you will now. <laughs> right let's crack on let's crack on so what we're going to do is we're going to do a version of this card here which I've already made I made one ahead of time I don't often do that but I made one ahead of time because I knew I was going to do a lot of faffing around and I needed to know where I was at um, so the version we're going to do is purple um, but again using the papers from the snowscape paper pad and it's a seven by seven card, a proper card. Opens up and everything. <laughs> so let's let's do our background to begin with because we need to get that drying. Although I have got one that's cut out. So we're going to take one of the purple pieces from um, the Snowscape uh, paper pad. I have actually cut a little bit off. off. It, you do get an eight by eight. And I like it because it's joined, uh, it's gummed on this edge here. So you don't actually lose any of your design if you tear it when you, you um, tear it out. So we're gonna just add to that background because I like to. And we're gonna pop just a bit of water on some craft sheet. And we're gonna sprinkle some Aubergine Dream uh, pixie powder on here. Um, you could use if you wanted a dark purple you could use a purple violet but we're going for this one it's got a bit of pink in it this one then it's aubergine dream and i can use this edge here just to move around the color and then we can dip lots of dipping there's a lot of uh, colour here actually you can see you can see okay and you leave that to dry so we're going to put that to one side hopefully I'm not stick it in anything and obviously we would normally pick all that up you absolutely would but we're not going to today because we're doing a video. We can definitely get another nice background out of that. Pixie powders go everywhere, so do make sure that you've actually cleaned, proper cleaned up. And um, then we're going to we're going to fast forward and pretend that that's dry. And where's my one I've cut out? I cut 
one out. Maybe I haven't cut one out. Right, we won't fast forward just yet then. We'll, what we'll do is we'll stamp the snowman and we'll come back to doing the background in a minute. I honestly thought I'd cut one out, but I haven't. Okie dokie, so let's stamp the snowman. I need to wait for that background to dry now before I can cut it out. Oh, I have, I have absolutely got it. I know where it is. <laughs> I'm flattening it. Here it is. <laughs> Let's do that background. I popped it under there. Right, so you can see it's nice and dry now and you've got a little bit of... Let me see. It's very hard to capture it on the camera. You've got a little bit... Oh, there it is. A little bit of the shine from the mica in the background. And it is the other side to the one that I've just done. Just thought I'd show you different. And I cut it out with the largest die in sample Shabby Basics layered ripped papers. So I've cut it out with this largest die here. And then that will fit, if you want it to, on an A6 card perfectly. So we're going to use the abstract grid. And that's going to fit on here perfectly too. And I know my, where my snowman's going to roughly go. Beforehand, I did actually stamp the snowman first, but we're not going to do that this time. Uh, tape. I know my snowman's going, going to be covering up this area here. So I can secure it there. I can secure it at the top as well. So let's get a little bit of extra colour down to give it a point of difference so you can actually see the abstract grid. So we're going for Wilted Violet first of all, which is a lovely purple. Distress Ink, put some stamping on top. And you won't see much of it just yet. The biggie will be when we reveal. I don't want to move it yet in case I can't get it back in the same place. I should be able to because the lines help you line things up. Just going to give you a different background. You can, of course, use the wonderful faded gingham um, from the new collection for a background. And if you're interested, um, a little bit of Christmas is one of the um, one of the themes in my next workshop at the Makers House in Fairham. That's on Sunday, the eighth of September, and then on Sunday, the seventeenth of September, we're going full on Christmas. So, so there won't be any other theme. It'll just be Christmas, and there'll be Christmas music and all that sort of stuff going on. Um, but we're just hinting at Christmas with the one in September. Oh, you can do all day, you can do half a day, you can choose you want to do Christmas all day. Um, I'll let you, that's absolutely fine. Now I'm just going to pop this fairy hook stencil on the top and hold it in place. And we're going for Villainous Potion. So I'm going for a darker purple now. This is really dark. Um, you could just go on again with the wilted violet and it will show up because you're you're applying the ink on top of ink and so it will be darker but I want to make sure I can see the snowflakes so that's why I'm going for a really really dark purple so you can see them through there hopefully like that and this is what I love about the abstract grid you wait till we do the reveal marvellous I did ask everybody on my Facebook page who wanted it and there were lots of people that wanted it but some of them haven't bought it so um, that's fine that's absolutely fine but so it does mean I've got plenty of stock left over and uh, we will be playing with this stencil at the um, um, crafting under canvas event that the Makers House are actually running themselves so um, have a look at the Makers House website for details um, on that you can do the Saturday or the Sunday 
uh, or you can do both days and I think it's the 21st and 22nd of September down here in Hampshire so hopefully you can see we've got some snowflakes coming on there I am going to do a tiny bit of stamping as well in the snowman set you've got a little snowflake so we're going to use that because we can because we can stamp through the stencil as well where's my little block dinky little acrylic circle is perfect for this and I'm using Wendy Becky makeup the purple the, the violet in this set and we're just gonna stamp some extra snowflakes through the stencil because we can and that will wash off just in water just like any other dye ink Let's just give it a wipe. and then we can do our reveal obviously we're going to have a gap there because that's hopefully where my snowman's going to sit this is what the abstract grid is all about it's giving you a wonderful grid for you to work with Cool. Right, okay, clean that up and then we'll look to stamping our snowman. There's quite a lot to this card so I need to make sure I remember everything I need to do, including picking my, my background from under my mat. <laughs> I did do it yesterday so obviously I forgot. Right, so going into our stamping platform and we're going to pop this just in the corner like so. And I've got a magnet without a jobby on and that can sit there. And it should, because he's not a full A6, he should fit on there nicely. Here he is. over there because I'm going to mat I'm going to pop another one on top it's going to be absolutely fine obviously if you just wanted to stamp this and you didn't want to um, put another one on top then uh, just mask it mask it top and bottom and just hopefully hold it in place when you're doing your stenciling just trying to check if that's straight Let me have a look that looks as straight as it can be. Come up. And we're going to stamp with Nocturne Burst Fine Clear. What we're mainly concerned about is getting the arms and the ends of the um, scarf, the, the, the fringes of the scarf. We're not too bothered about anything else because we're going to pop another snowman on top. But it does help to have the outline so you know where the snowman's going to go. find if you're stamping on top of the mica product which obviously bits of powders are sometimes it doesn't stamp properly that's just the nature of mica I'm just going to go again because that's a little bit light there so I'm really going to make sure that I do the arms and the ends of the of the scarf okay good 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 he looks fab no use and then we're going to take this is a piece of the um, I think it's called brilliant white super smooth 
card for alcohol markers. It's the sentimentally yours one anyway. Because I like Francoise's idea of minimal colouring in. Really like that idea. So um, so it's it's so I can use my alcohol markers. And I am going to use Versafine Claire rather than my memento. Um, because it is it is kind of an hybrid style ink. You do need to make sure it's dry, so perhaps stamp it one day and use it the next, or even the day after that. Um, I'm not too worried about the fringes this time. Um, and you do have to make sure that you don't put loads and loads of ink on it. Occasionally you get a bleed anyway, but you know, I'm not, I'm not getting brilliant results from my memento. I think I just, hopefully I just need to re-ink it, but um, anywho, stamp stamp with whatever you want to if you're using alcohol markers obviously if you want to use the watercolor blending brush pens or any watercolors then stamp stamping with a um, versifying clay is absolutely fine anyway um, but you want to go onto a different card other than the um, you know you want a watercolor card probably instead of this uh, alcohol card Got the middle. The middle. I normally need a bit of attention to. Let's have a look. He's pretty good. I need to do his eye though, because he's he looks like he's 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 lost his eye. Let's just go again. Of course we can. Remember it. They are big stamps. It was his eye, wasn't it? That was having a bit of an issue with Cole wasn't black. If you don't want to go again, you can just use a micron pen or something like that to fill in his eye. That's him. Well done. He's such a cool snowman, isn't he? I love Francoise's artwork. It's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Right. Just wipe him off so I don't get too mucky. And lift him off. And it is good quality uh, photopolymer made in the UK. Oh, we also want to stamp this little one as well. As this, we're going to cut this out, we can just stamp this any, anywhere, anywhere we like. I think that little block is going to be going to fit me. This is the postage mark. So there's the postage mark. Really cool. That's why does a lot of postage stamps. As I said, everything I'm using you can find over on my website, except for the alcohol markers, actually. Right, so that's going to be put to one side. Oh, we've got a little bit more stamping to do. Let's do it while we're here. I think we've, we've finished with the snowman now. You have got other sentiments on this set. You've got winter wishes and let it snow as well. In that kind of typewriter font. So I want to stamp on here. I'm going to turn this around. And put it on here like this. Now there's no words on this one, so it really doesn't matter which way I go. There's no words on that one. That's the one I used on my original one. So if I just grab that. You can see in the background it's 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 this one. Uh, so, but I'm going to use that side this time just as a difference. And you can see I've stamped this border here. Well, let's get rid of that. I've stamped this border here, but we're going to stamp a different border just so we can be different, just to show you that they all work. So to work out where we want that, let's just pop this in here at the moment. So this is my uh, backer for this 
and this is I cut this at um, I've got it written down somewhere. Yeah, I cut this at three and seven eighth inches. I don't know in new money. Three and seven eighth inches that way, and five and five eighth inches that way, so that it fits nicely. And that will go on here. Actually, I think a teal background would have been very nice with this. Actually, that will go on there like that. I've also got a snowflake border. So this border is from the Sentimentally Yours um, Festive Deep Edges. Yeah, Festive Deep Edges. Um, you'll find this over at uh, Funny Pot Crafts if it's still available. Uh, I don't have any, um, I don't think. Um, but yes, yeah, so um, have a look over at Phil's website. And I've used this snowflake border here because obviously it fits the theme. So we will need to try and get within this, let's pop that there, oh, not like that Julia, that's in the corner, pop that there roughly, that's going to be there roughly, like that, just a little bit of planning, so let's see this is why I had to make one, because I knew I'd be faffing around. Now we're going to take the borders and so I used the word one. I think I'm going to use this snowflake one. I do like that one, but I'm going to go for this, this kind of snowflake one here. I like all of them actually. This is the Christmas borders. Actually, these borders would be fab with um, Jane's new stamps as well. Right, so if I want to do that, I'm going to have to move this a wee bit, I think. And then that can fit. Is that straight? On the two borders, you want to try and get them as straight as you can. Let me have a look. Doesn't matter if there's a little bit behind that. Remember, the stamp's always bigger because it has to, because you have to have a little bit of a, a gap for the polymer. I don't know if this is a symmetrical border or not. Right, we're going to go there, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to pick it up and then we can remove everything that's in excess of what we need right now. So pop our magnets where they need to be. And then we can stamp our border. And I'm going to go for black because the snowman is stamped in black. bases around here, there's navy bases and um, there's just lots of military. There we go, I'm going to stamp that and we'll see if it's straight. If it isn't, it doesn't really matter because it's a wibbly wobbly border. Sorry about the shake on the camera, it always happens when I'm doing some stamping. Cool. That's quite, that's a really nice grungy border. Let's see if I can show you. Let's show you that way up. There we go. Just adds a little bit to that background. Okay, okay. Let's clean that off just a wee bit so I don't get too mucky. So there's a little bit more stamping I need to do. just cut the top off the hangy bit then you can just slide your stamps in and out and you don't need to keep on undo undoing this this because at some point it stops being sticky and it gets in the way when you want to put your stamps away anyway so just top cut the top off that was one of Jane's ideas Jane Gill not my idea can't take credit for that right so that's that figure out where all my bits are. Oh yes, what else do I need to do? I need to do another border. Got a piece of paper this time. And we want a 
long piece. This is a long piece that's left over. And we're just going to stamp along the edge. And we're going to use Monarch first fine clear. And we're going to use this border here, which you can cut out if you want to um, along the lines, uh, but I've just trimmed it. So you want to make sure that it doesn't go all wibbly wobbly. Unless you want it curved, it's up to you. So the best thing to do is to just pop it down on a piece of paper first of all, and then you can pick it up with your block. So you take your block to it, and then it's nice and straight because it settles into its straightness. It's not on my block straight, but that just, that, that's by the by. So Monarch is a lovely deep purple. It's one of the original colours of the Swine Claire which of course you'll find on my website and we're just going to stamp it by eye along the edge and hopefully my border is straight at the bottom. It's not the end of the world if it isn't. Give it a good old press, give that ink a chance to get in the paper and remove it. And then you want it a bit longer because it's not long enough for my um, paper that measures uh, six and three eighths inch square. So we want a bit more. I always make the mistake of thinking of all the stamp, but I haven't this time. And again, by eye, try and line it up. Again, it doesn't matter if it's not 100% because the bit where you've joined can be behind the snowman panel. So they're a bit close together. That's my join. They're a bit close together, but you won't see it when you put it behind the snowman. Actually, it's not too bad. It's quite straight, actually. So then you just trim it, same size border along the edge. Obviously, if you think that's a little bit too wide, trim a bit extra off. Or, like I say, you can actually just cut along the line if you want to. Just clean a bit of that ink off. Okay, okay, that's all the stamping done. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right, now, we do need to do a little bit of colouring in. First, I think what I might do is... No, I will colour in first. See, I told you, there's a lot for me to think about. So what I've done is I've cut, like Francoise did when she did her demos, I've cut out the snowman and he will fit on top of this snowman here. So he's going to then pop on the background. And I've also cut my North Pole out, which is going to go up here somewhere. Okay. So using these alcohol markers, these are graph masters which I have had for a very, very, very long time. You might remember um, Creative Expressions Distributed uh, Graphmaster. They are a um, German company, um, so the quality is exceptional. Um, it's like their cars, you know, they get everything right. Um, and I haven't used them for whew, five or six years, but they're just as juicy as they were when I got them. And so I've got number 83 and blue grey 3. So we've got lavender and we've got blue grey 3. Uh, so just like when Francoise has done hers, we're just going to colour in a little bit. You can see, just colour in a few sections. So we're going to very quickly do that. And we're only going to do um, one coat, whereas normally alcohol markers, what you do is you... You kind of start with the, do you start with the lightest? I don't think, I can't remember actually. I think you start with the lightest, then you do the medium one, and then you do the dark one, and then you go back to the lighter one on top and get all your shade and whatever. We're not doing that. We're just going to do basic colouring in. And this card from Sentimental Yours is very, very good card for your alcohol markers. I can't remember what it's, I think it's called... Like I say, I think it's called Brilliant White Super Smooth Card for Alcohol Markers. I don't know. But it's very, very um, smooth, as I said. 
and um, it does absorb the ink really well, which is what you want. You want the alcohol to evaporate. So if we look on the back, it's gone through. Oh, there's one I didn't stamp very well. It's gone through. It's almost in exactly the same place, except for the, I don't know how I did that. Anyway, it's gone through, which is what you want. You want it to go through because otherwise it might spread out and that's not what you want. Let's do his little bow tie as well. It's quite, it's quite nice using them again, actually. And they've got such a really good um, solid tip on them. Have a look, see if you can find them. Um, I really like them. Right, so I did that one and that one and that one. So let's do, let's do it the different way around. So let's do this one on the edge instead. The only one I've had trouble with is, is my, I think I've had trouble with um, the bleed on the red, but I, I thought it was because I'd stamped on the back and it seeped back through, but I don't know. You take your chances. You take your chances. We're not bothering with any sort of shading. Do not stamp with archival ink and use alcohol markers. That you lose your line art. That that's just a big no no. If you find stamping with distress, distress oxide or distress ink, or any of your uh, dye based inks. So he's going to have a purple nose. That's why not. He says he can't have a purple nose. And the berry is going to be purple. There's going to be a purple button. Or lavender, as this one's called. And then we're going to colour in that 25 as well. In the purple. And I've gone for blue grey because. Why have I gone for cool grey? Uh, did I go for blue grey? Cool grey. Yeah, blue grey. Um, I've gone for blue grey because just because I like it. Cool grey would work as well, really well. You don't want to go too light. I did do blue grey one to begin with, and that was just too light. And we're going to have a little bit here as well, underneath the line on the north pole. Like so. See, not rocket science. And then we're going to do um, where Francoise has got the dots. I've used that as shading. I love this idea of Francoise's. It's like colouring in for beginners, you know. But it's so effective. What do we do? How do we do it on the bottom instead of the top? I don't know. Should have done it on the top. Oh, I don't know. Don't matter at all. So you're going to go round one side of his face. Do a little bit on his neck. And a little bit down the neck. Obviously I'm going quite quickly, or trying to go quite quickly. So, and then we'll go round the top. I normally just colour it in and show you that if you're like me, you've not touched alcohol markers for a while. I think it's quite handy. So on this one, I'm going to go down here, and then I'm going to go round buttons.
and it does it does absorb into the card so where you think oh that you know that looks awful just wait just wait Be all right in the end. And then yeah, we go around the joy box. just a little bit where that shading is. And we've got the Happy Christmas box. Like so. And go underneath there like that. Do you want to go under? Let's go under there. We can. Because we can. Another does it. Right. I think he's done. Oh, let me go around this one as well. I'll show you in a minute. to just get my borders on my background piece so that yeah, they can be green and I've got to ink around the edges as well so let's get my where's my villainous potion yeah. so we're going to edge with villainous potion distressed oxide because I like to dress, uh, go with, around with my oxides rather than my distress I'm a bit of a creature of habit get into all the little crannies because obviously it's like a torn edge and if you're not careful you just get the, the peaks of the tear rather than going into the really big worth doing it really is okay I've got the edge on that and then we've got this is my border that I've cut trimmed down and so I'm going to go around the edges of this as well but obviously I'm not going to do the end because this is too long there's no point in doing the end When I positioned this border on my um, my original one, my teal one, um, there was a little bit of stamping that on one of the words that wasn't wasn't brilliant. So I used that to decide where to position this border. You know, so borders can help you cover things up. I'm happy with how the um, snowflake borders stamp though. That's that one. 
and then one more that we need to ink around it is this snowflake border this is again this, this is this is eight inches long so this is this is too long uh, so there's no point inking on the edges I probably should have inked on the edge before I stuck it down but well, we can do that on this one I'm thinking about my tail one because I didn't so I'm going to go up and down on the zigzags got a bit carried away inking this one inked as well so that's all my inking I believe I've got a little bit of ink there let me get my white card on it hopefully I'm not too inky okie dokie right so let's get this border stock so that we can have it set so um, that uh, we can trim it down in a moment but I, li I like the um, I like the glue to be stuck before I trim it. I mean, I like if you trim it too soon, then you can um, dislodge it because the the, the um, glue is still wet. Oh, brain's not working at all. Very difficult getting your brain to work when it's hot. I don't actually need any on the bottom one. I'm not worried about the actual snowflakes itself because I've got a little trick about gluing down the snowflakes. I do want to get rid of some of the excess glue though, so I'm going to grab a piece of kitchen roll if I can get up. on this bottom edge which is actually the side edge and it's out like that let's have a look on the inside yeah that's fine So this will come on here like so and where's my join? Uh, my join is here I believe. So we'll have it, I like that snowflake there, I like all the snowflakes, let's have it about there I think. I'm moving it anyway. So we want it in between these two snowflakes here. So not in the middle, because that's the middle one. Of course I put glue all the way along, because that's what I do. So we're going to have it in between those two snowflakes there. I think it's straight. Don't know if it's straight with my ruler. Can't see my ruler, so let's have a, let's have a hold up. It looks pretty straight. Right. I'll get rid of this as well. And give it a push on the back. So I just want to give give that a few seconds for that glue to dry. And then I can trim that down and try and remember to ink around the edge, edgy bits. Let's glue this down. I 
it has buckled. I did think I must have used a bit too much water on this one. It has buckled a bit. Hopefully we can flatten it down a bit. Pop that down on here. Black makes everything pop. That's pretty straight. And we'll glue our snowman on top. I can't believe I managed to just line it up the same on the back. See, it's two sides to a piece of card. I don't know what, why I didn't just over stamp this one. Maybe it moved, oh, it moved slightly. Maybe mm, that's why. Lift him up. Popping down on there. Obviously, because it's glue, we can move him around. He's in the right place. He looks fab, doesn't he? Do you like the background? Hopefully you like the background. I really love the abstract grid. Such a useful stencil. Because obviously you can use it for any occasion. Um, I've made samples that are, you know, florals and all sorts it's not a year as a sort of occasion specific stencil which is quite nice where are we going to put that let's put that over there like so let's pop that underneath here just to flatten out a wee bit and we can pop our background layer on our seven by seven card see it opens i'm just proving that it opens. I do make proper cards. I've made a lot of proper cards recently actually. I'm trying to make proper cards so people can use them or do journal pages so I can keep them and look at them. I should do journal pages with these stamps actually because these are fab stamps. We do get um, extra little snowflakes as well, so we, we use some of those. They fall out of here. Let's just turn this off now. Let's turn it over, and you can use the edge of the card to trim. Keep these as a little embellishments if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. I mean, that's almost like an arrow, isn't it? Point in there. Last one. Oh. It's quite a long video, but I think we've done quite a lot on this. Ink, ink, Julia. So let's have a bit of ink here. This is what I forgot last time. I get carried away. So then this matches the edge edge. And here. This one will be more finished than the other one. See, I think that the teal uh, paper in the background would be rather nice. I didn't think about that until after I cut this. And I thought, well, I've got it now, so we're going to use it. But what we could have done is we could have had it this way. Should we do this? I don't know if I want to. Where's it gone? Here it is. So we could do, so we could have it up there like that, and we could have that there like that instead. Should we do that? Let's do that. And then it'd be different from this one, won't it? Because that one's like, oh, that one's like that. Oh, move it over. 
Let's do that. Can you good changing things up? Because you can do that, this is yours, until it's stuck. I'll make sure it's the right way, yeah. So normally I would then put this underneath my mat as well, so that this would flatten. But it's not going to happen now. Try not to use too much glue. It's the glue that makes your cards warp. So try and kind of draw with it. And if you draw with it, then you're going to get less out of the nozzle. Let's see how we're going here. Equalish border. And look at that, my car, back of my car's nice and clean still. It's a bonus. So we're doing that. Then we're going to put the top on the glue. And we're just going to, because we've got the border here, I am going to put the one millimetre bone tape on here. This is the woodware one. Because the border is, is that way um, and you're not trying to do a border with words say down here, you, you've got that flexibility to be able to change how you do it, which is fab. I think just as an insurance policy I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back of this tape just to make sure that I can move it if I need to. So I am having to going to have to put it down around a camera. And of course it does mean that the that this won't fall off at any point. Not that I've experienced that with the woodwork bone tape actually. Oh, right, let's see. So we're gonna have it. I want to see that snowflake there. That looks pretty straight to me. Okay, cool. So I said we've got some extra snowflakes and they fall out of this border here. So these are really useful and of course they're out of the pattern paper. So I think what we'll do is we will put, we can put one on in there. That's quite a big one though. Let's go down the size. Let's put one up there, and then I did put a smaller one. Oh, I might put the same size actually this time, just down there. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could tuck some extra ones underneath, you know, and have them dotted around. I'm just going to go for two, just so I don't faff, because I know I will faff, um, just as an idea. Let's because we're going to make sure they're stuck properly because if you don't make sure snowflakes are stuck properly some of the fronds, I think they're called fronds, are going to break off or bend and you don't want to that to do, do that. Another alternative is of course it, that you cut the whole border out of double sided adhesive and the Elizabeth Craft Designs one is the one I would highly recommend. Jesus, where have they gone? There they are. Um, and you will find that in sheets and also four inch wide rolls on my website. Let's go there there like so. And then we've got this one. Nearly there. Let's see if we can do it within an hour. Not, maybe not. Let's see. So there is quite a lot to this, but sometimes you want to make special cards. Like I say, you could just do that as an A6. That size will then go on an A6 card and give you a little border. So you can absolutely do that. But if you want to just use the same design and make it bigger, you can do this if you want to. Let's get some gems now. I did tell you about trapping these in because these are loose. So we will put some gems in. These are from Sentimentally Yours and you'll find these over at the Honeypot, Honeypot Crafts website. So we're going to have 
um, I put big ones in the corner, so let's put a big one here and a big one in there. And we're going to put one in the centre of there, one in the centre of there, and then we're going to put pearls, not pearls, gems, in the centre of all these snowflakes on the border. And it will trap those, because obviously you've got, it's the negative that you get in the border. It will trap those and mean that they won't come up. So we want our pokey pickup tool thingy. Come in a pack of two, these are from Sentimental Yours. And give those a jiggle so they go the right way up. And have a big one down here. They don't, there's not a three millimetre in, in here because that would just be too small for the facets. So they're all fives. And I think I did all fives along the border I did. Now with the border, because you've got the depth of the paper, you do need to really press these on and you will find that they want to come up again, not the pearl. It's not a pearl Julie, it's a gem. You do find that they want to come up again, but you, do, you just have to be insistent that those fronds or negative pieces stay down. So you need to press it a couple of times. Sometimes they get trapped underneath them. So just press it. Jiggle. Jiggle puts them up the right way. Get jiggy with it. I'm sure that's a song, isn't it? If you want to go really big, you could go really big. And put the eight millimeters, perhaps in the centre one if you wanted to. But we're staying with the fives all the way up. See how much come up. Cheeky. quite sticky this because it the end broke off and so this was this bit's really sticky. There we go. Two more and then we're done. done. So I'm going to keep on pressing that down until the glue's set. But isn't he fab? You can't see it all can you? So it's best, I'm best off leaving him there. Isn't he fab? Nice. I, like, I quite like purple at Christmas. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that. As I said you can find the products used over on my website juliawattscrafts.co.uk. Go and visit Honeypot Crafts for the um, the, uh, what's it called? Festive deep edges. Yes, festive deep edges die. Uh, but I do have the sample and I have the um, the snowscape papers. I have the Christmas borders. I have the wooden snowman. Um, I have the abstract grid and also the fairy snowflakes stencil um, and the inks. So I have all, everything else. Um, and do have a look somewhere for the Graphmaster alcohol markers because I, I really think they're really nice. Um, I've never used Copic so I can't actually compare them with Copics. Um, but I have had Pro markers and these are far superior in my opinion to Pro markers. I just bring in um, the teal one so you can see the, the difference between the two. So we've got the same, same design. One, one with the border on the right, one with the border on the left. Um, exactly the same techniques. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it's been useful. 
do like and subscribe if you're not already uh, my youtube channel oh did that wrong sorry on my youtube channel um love to read your comments and do check out some of my other videos thank you for watching